Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Kano Tryharding Modern. Today we have a variant of Ad Nauseum. Um, this deck has been performing quite well. It has a number of 5-0 finishes every couple of days, so I figured, you know what, why not? It's been a long time since I've played Ad Nauseum, and the text changed quite a bit. But for those of you that don't know, this deck has two combos. The first one is a completely instant speed combo. Um, it's one of the only ones that used to exist in Modern. Might still be the only truly instant speed combo in Modern. Um, but the idea is, you cast Angel's Grace, and you can't lose the game this turn no matter what. Then you cast Ad Nauseum, and you pick up your whole deck. You go to like approximately negative 60 life, and then you cast Lightning Storm. And then you deal 40-some damage to your opponent um, with triple Pact of Negation backup. Um, it really sucks to get that Dovin's vetoed, though, so there is an alternative combo. The alternative combo here is to do Angel's Grace, Ad Nauseum, Thassa's Oracle, um, or... The four mana combo now that exists, which is Angel's Grace, spoils, for the, spoils of the Vault, name a card that isn't in your deck, lose life equal to your deck size, then cast Thassa's Oracle. So it's a three card combo. The remainder of the deck is Cantrips, Fast Mana, and uh, like we're even running Scrylands. So uh, this deck, when it was only running the six mana combo before Thassa's Oracle existed, uh, occasionally it ran like one or two Lightning Storm and then a Laboratory Maniac. And the idea was you would run like as many Scry Lands as possible because you just needed to top deck the combo pieces. Um, so out of the sideboard we have Leyline to protect us from Hand Hate. Ceremonious Rejection to try and shore up some of those colorless matchups. The fourth Pact of Negation in case counter spells are useful. Uh, we do have A Thoughtseize and Veil of Summer to help fight off other types of decks. And then, if we really need Wraths, we have Bantu's Last Reckoning. And if we decide that we want to have an alternative win condition, or we suspect our opponent takes out most of their removal, we play Grave Titan, and we just try and fast mana ramp into Grave Titan as a different way to win. So, um, I've rambled on enough about this deck, and I'm going to take it into a modern constructed league. Now, um, in my lifetime, Ad Nauseum is probably the deck I have played the most. I have played more than 1,600 games with Ad Nauseum, but I haven't played Ad Nauseum for about two years. So, we'll see how this goes. I had this deck almost completely foil in paper. I'm missing, like, three foil Ad Nauseums and a couple of the miscellaneous lands. Um, it is by far one of my favorite decks, so hopefully I can explain the strategy well enough for those of you who want to pick it up and learn how to play it. Um, all right, here we go. Round one. All right, we're on the draw, which is a significant disadvantage. Um, our hand is three City of Brass, Plains, Pact, and Penthead Prism. So the only thing this hand needs to win is a Phyrexian on Life or an Angel's Grace. We have no cantrips to get there, and if our opponent is playing Hand Hate, we're going to be sad. But, considering the colors of mana that we have and the quantity of mana that we have, plus a combo piece and protection, I'm going to keep. We are on the draw, which, I mean, getting an additional draw here is going to be nice. Alright, opponent did mulligan to six, so let's see what they start with. Island. Probably one of our least favorite of matchups. Anything that starts Island. The only matchup that I'm actually not good with this deck is Ad Nauseum versus Ad Nauseum. Because I'm... God damn it. <laughs> it's ad nauseum. Uh, start planes, pass the turn. So, I'm terrible in ad nauseum versus ad nauseum because generally whoever combos first loses. Um, yep, it's ad nauseum, damn it. Uh, <laughs> and I get impatient, is what I'm trying to say. So, I don't. I think I've maybe played this matchup a total of like 14, 15 times. I don't know if I've ever won a single one. Like, it's that bad. <laughs> Here I am, talking this big game. Immediately get put into a situation I am incredibly uncomfortable with. But we're going to let our opponent know what's going on and play a Pentad Prism here. So next turn we'll have five mana. Opponent says, wow, he he he. Yeah, no, they know. And so do we. The problem is, 
if our opponent has uh, Angel's Grace, if we try to combo, there's just nothing we can do about it. If they don't have white mana, though, we should be able to do something. All right, opponent plays their own Pentad Prism, so they will have white mana. One of the, like, one of the safest ways you can win this matchup, and I hate it, is um, you can cast your Simeon Spirit Guides and just attack with bears, basically. <laughs> um, so we're going to play a second Pentad Prism here. Um, we know that Angel's Grace is on top of our deck, so we can spoil for Angel's Grace safely if we have to. Okay. But it is getting down pretty low in mana there. They leave a card on top. Question is, do we go for it? Hmm. So, one thing we can do, if we Angel's Grace ad nauseum, we can cast Phyrexian on life, and then we won't die to the life loss. Um, if they don't have Angel's Grace, we're fine. Let me take a look at the main deck for this, this list again real quick. Yeah, there's no interaction other than... Okay. All right. They have three cards in hand. I'm going to go for it. Moto. That land was tapped, and then you said it wasn't. Okay, we need to pick up a good portion of our deck, but not necessarily the whole thing. I really, really would like to cast um, Phyrexian on life. Because if my opponent has an Angel's Grace, we can't win if we... Uh, pass priority to their turn. Okay, there's a Phyrexian on life. We have one, two Simeon Spirit Guides, and we played a City of Brass this turn. Okay, all right. I think we only have one Pact of Negation, though. Yeah, we only have one. Okay, I'm going to repeat this a couple more times. Another Simeon Spirit Guide is helpful. Okay, all right. Yeah, I do not wish to repeat this. Now, we can try Lightning Storming, but if my opponent has an Angel's Grace and an Ad Nauseum, we're super dead. Um, I kind of just want to cast Phyrexian on life, because then uh, we'll have multiple packs of Negation and an Angel's Grace for... Um... Actually, we don't need Angel's Grace. Crap, hang on. All right. We're going to go with the Phyrexian on life plan. Suspend those, because it's just less we have to discard. Okay. So we still have two Simeon Spirit Guides and a Pentad Prism. Oh, okay. I know what we can do. No, actually we can't. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't have a way to transform those that red mana directly into blue mana. So I'm just going to pass now. Okay, end step. We are going to discard Lightning Storm, Second Spoils, Ad Nauseum. Um, land, land, keep Thassa's Oracle. Land, land, keep Thassa's Oracle, I think. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Uh, don't need land. We're going to narrow it down further, but we're going to keep these cards in particular. So Pact of Negation, Two Angels Grace, Simeon Spirit Guide. We don't actually need Simeon Spirit Guides, so I can get rid of those. That's one, two, three, four, five... Six, seven, eight cards. Okay, I need to get rid of one more card. I guess we don't really need the mana. We will have five mana, which should be enough. Okay, so this is the safest hand I can make for what my opponent's doing. If my opponent casts an Ad Nauseum, or if they cast a Spoils, I'm like double pacting it immediately. Like, I will do everything in my power to prevent that from resolving. Okay. Lotus Bloom's coming off Suspend. We'll draw a Pentad Prism. <clears throat> now my opponent almost certainly has one Angel's Grace. If they have two, and we go for the combo now, we lose. So, the longer we give them, the more likely it is they have it, too. 
we can get through one Angel's Grace or any number of Pact of Negations, basically. So what I'm going to do is I am going to activate City of Brass, Spoils of the Vault. Now, if you're going to combo win with Ad Nauseum, something you should know, there's two cards that you can name. The first one is Abandon All Hope. Oh, no, it's Abandon Reason. The better one is Commence the End Game. <laughs> Alright, we have exiled the rest of our deck. So now, blue blue, Thassa's Oracle. If my opponent has an Angel's Grace, they'll cast it now. Yep. Okay. So opponent cannot lose the game, which means we cannot win. We have no cards to reorganize, so we pass the turn. Okay, opponent's going to attempt to ad nauseum. We're going to Pact of Negation that. Generally, in this situation, whoever... Okay, we're going to let that resolve. And we're going to Pact Ad Nauseum again. So now my opponent has to pay for Pact in addition to everything else that just happened. Um, which will be all of their mana. They will not be able to combo with no cards in hand, obviously. So unless my opponent top decks Angel's Grace, exactly. No, actually, they could top deck Pact of Negation. So unless they top deck Angel's Grace or Pact of Negation here, we're fine. Um, considering they've used, I think they have five top decks, by my math. Alright. Serum Visions gets them a random one. Alright, stop on our upkeep. Stack triggers. Angel's Grace. The fact that they're not playing it out is scary to me. <laughs> if this was Lab Man, we could just, you know, draw with our natural uh, win condition draw and whatnot. Play another Thassa's Oracle. Don't you dare have an Angel's Grace or a Pact of Negation. Oh, thank God. <laughs> we did it. It wasn't easy, but we did it. Okay, so versus um, the opposing Ad Nauseam matchup. Oh, what do we do? I think we want Thoughtseize Pact. I'm toying with the idea of Veil of Summer. Ceremonious Rejection's kind of like, kind of meh. Like, we could counter a Pentad Prism or a Lotus Bloom, but we would have to cut so much of our deck to make that work. Leyline does nothing, because they're almost certainly winning with um, Thassa's Oracle. We could probably cut Lightning Storm, but I feel really bad about cutting win conditions. I'm going to cut a uh, two Serum Visions here to make room for the Pact and the... Thought sees. I was like, what was the other card I brought in? Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm supposed to know this deck. <laughs> um, we could bring in Grave Titan. It might be too slow, but it's not like they're going to slaughter pact it, which is a card that this deck used to run. Um, we could cut a cantrip for Grave Titan, but I worry about not being able to assemble the combo if I go that low. Um, yeah, we'll bring in a Grave Titan, and I'll do it for a Serum Visions. I always like having one sleight of hand. Um, it's kind of just superstition, but it's like if I don't have a card in my hand that I need, Sleight of Hand is better at finding the card this turn than Serum Visions. This hand has the combo and a Mana Monkey and a little bit of protection. Um, I'm willing to keep this. If we draw Spoils, we can go off with four mana, provided it's the right colors. Opponent starts uh, City of Brass. We draw. I'm kind of sad that I'm playing against Ad Nauseum in round one because uh, this is taking actually a large amount of my focus, and I'm not, I don't feel like right now I can talk about general ad nauseum strategy or what you want to be doing. Pentad Prism I will leave on top. Um, as, as much as I would like to, anyway. It'll probably have to wait until next game when I can explain, like, what I'm looking for, or exactly why I want it, that sort of a thing. Okay, opponent is playing a Pentad Prism here. Okay. We untap. We draw Pentad Prism, so play Pentad Prism. Okay, pass the turn. If my opponent were to, like, play out their third land, exile some in Spirit Guide and combo, we would basically have no choice but to Pact, and then try and combo on our turn, because they would be tapped out of mana at that point. Um... The number one thing you can do in matchups like this is try and build as many redundancies into your hand as possible for when whatever the action turn is happens. I'm just not good at it. Alright, so opponent is going to play a Thassa's Oracle. Sure. 
So they're just using it to dig. They're not going to try and win with it. Okay, they leave a card on top. Multiple Thassa's Oracles are dangerous because uh, our opponent would not have to go to zero cards in the library and do what I was doing, where they were like ca were having to cast like Angel's Grace and stuff to stay alive every single turn. Um, yeah, Pented Prism is the play here. We technically have enough mana to combo, and we can combo at instant speed with a Pact of Negation backup. The problem is, if my opponent has an Angel's Grace or their own Pact of Negation, we're probably screwed. <laughs> So I'm trying to build up enough mana to do a similar thing what I did last game. Alright, so opponent kept a card on top of their deck from Thassa's Oracle. And they're not playing a land this turn, which means they were picking up protection or a combo piece. Okay, they may have been a land then. We untap, we draw spoils. So we do have Angel's Grace spoils Thassa's Oracle if we want. Um, I would argue that we don't want that. Not right now, anyway. Okay, I'm going to play a Temple of Enlightenment. Let's see how they scry. One card on the bottom. And then get in for one. Really tempted to cast this Simeon Spirit Guide. Oh, they're doing something else now? They're casting a Simeon Spirit Guide. All right, if that's the game you want to be playing, opponent. So I was considering casting an Ad Nauseum for value here, but because my opponent's going to be going on the slow attack plan rather than the combo, uh, I think I don't think we can. All right, we draw Dark Slick Shores. I pass the turn. If my opponent ever somehow completely taps out of mana or combos without protection, um, we're going to win. I don't think my opponent would do that but it is possible. All right, they attack. I'm sorry, because I think, uh, like, while I find this matchup interesting, a lot of people are going to find this one very boring. <laughs> Another Thassa's Oracle, huh? All right. We could Spoils for Grave Titan, but if it's deeper than 16 cards in our deck, uh, we die. Another Angel's Grace. All right. I am going to give up on our... Uh, potential combo hand is way too risky. This should prevent my opponent from attacking. Oh, whoops. I didn't realize that that's how that worked. <laughs> I've never in my life used that interface. So I put a gemstone mine on top of our deck, which, you know, it's not terrible. <laughs> like, I wouldn't mind it, right? Um, if my opponent continues attacking here, we should... Uh, we'll double block a Thassa's Oracle to kill it. All right, they don't. Opponent has not played combo too long to uh, forget about combat math. So we'll play our gemstone mine. Pass the turn. So while this uh, awkward standoff is going on, one thing I want to mention is that a lot of people will like, oh, a budget city of brass, I can play, um, I can play mana confluence. Uh, it's actually worse. There is a legitimate difference. And it's a big one. All right, Lightning Storm to the bottom. Do I want the third Pact of Negation? I don't think I need it. I have two Angel's Grace, two Pact. That should be enough. Uh, Mana Confluence is not equivalent to City of Brass here. Um, because this deck goes into negative life totals pretty frequently, Mana Confluence actually can't tap for mana if you don't have life. Um, in addition, uh, you can prevent the damage if you are at one life or above by Angel's Gracing. And there are some pretty interesting interactions between Angel's Grace, Phyrexian on Life, and the like. Um, so I highly recommend that if you are to play this deck, you need to get City of Brass. Do not substitute City of Brass. Gemstone Mine is also, like, it's really powerful, and I know it's very expensive. Um, but if you're going to play this deck, I would really strive to make sure that you have Gemstone Mine. Because there's no better land for the deck. All right, another City of Brass. We discarded, or we put Lightning Storm on the bottom of our deck. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we have enough mana. Uh, there's no reason to, like, not play out lands, I guess, unless I want to redirect my opponent's Lightning Storm. But they should not get to the point they're Lightning Storming. And if they do, we just Angel's Grace and win the game. So, I want enough mana that I can do stuff after casting a Grave Titan, basically. Okay, opponent Serum Visions. 
And like I said, it's it's possible that I should just like Angel's Grace spoils for Grave Titan, but if it's you know deeper than my life total in the deck, I'm going to lose immediately. Because Angel's Grace will stop damage from taking you left to less than one ma uh, life, but it does not stop um, it does not stop uh, life loss. The opponent's going to Thought Seize us. I'm going to pack the Thought Seize because I don't want my opponent to know what's going on. All right, we're going to just pay for the Pact here. Okay, we get another Simeon Spirit Guide. I'm going to wait to cast it till next turn. God, the first, like, two hours of this video is going to be this matchup, I've got a feeling. <laughs> All right, opponent has eight cards in hand, so it looks like they're going to have to discard due to hand size unless they play something. Alright. Unlife is a problem, but I'm not going to Pact of Negation that. That's too risky. We draw our own Unlife. In that case, cast an Unlife. We'll go red, white. Uh, we'll take a damage here for another red. And uh, cast Simeon Spirit Guide. Pass the turn. No attacks for our opponent. <laughs> this is like so awkward. The worst part is we may not actually be able to uh, resolve a Grave Titan. Like we had to use a pack and our opponent hasn't. Um, so it's probably not safe. We could add Nauseam and try and find it. But if my opponent has something like Patrician Scorn, um, which is one of my favorite sideboard cards to run in Ad Nauseam, by the way, um, it's a spell that destroys all enchantments, I think, for free, if you've cast a white spell this turn from Future Sight. Uh, good card, look it up. Highly recommend it. It's only useful in uh, corner cases, but occasionally is useful in um, Ad Nauseam as a way to... When you would win with uh, Lightning Storm only, it was a good way to win through... Um, Leyline, basically. All right, another Ad Nauseam. So we could cast an Ad Nauseam here because we have Phyrexian Unlife, but if my opponent has an answer for Phyrexian Unlife, uh, that's bad. They do have seven cards in hand. I'm going to do it. I don't want to go below positive life total, though, if I can. So land, land, grace. Bloom, oracle... Mana Monkey, Bloom, City of Brass, Mana Monkey. Okay. I cannot go any deeper than this because Grave Titan costs six. So I do not wish to repeat this process. Then we are going to play City of Brass. Red, red, red. Cast Simeon Spirit Guide. <laughs> Um, suspend, suspend, and I do not want to use my remaining mana to cast the other Simeon Spirit Guide right now, so we're just going to pass. So discard land, land, don't need ad nauseum. Not anymore. So I guess now is as good of a time as any to explain it. Um, Phyrexian on life, uh, basically you can't lose the game due to damage or life loss. You can only lose the game if you get to 10 Infect. And the only way you take Infect damage from Phyrexian Unlife is if your life total is at zero or less. Um, so, if you're at one life, you can take a billion trillion damage and none of it is Infect. Um, it only counts if you're at zero or less. So you can use Angel's Grace as a way, like, versus an aggressive deck to keep yourself at one life or above, and even if they're swinging 40 damage a turn, even if they're Elf Ball and they've activated the Zuri 40 times, um, you still will be at one. And the difference between one and zero in this deck is massive. Okay? Lotus Bloom's coming down soon-ish. Um, man, if we even had, like, a uh, Banefire at this point... <laughs> Well, I mean, they would have to Angel's Grace that, but... I might just go into the footage and speed this list up. 
or speed this this matchup up after the first game cuz I've already been recording for 40 minutes and I'm still on match 1. Get Dark Slick Shores. Play that. Cast Simeon Spirit Guide. Take 1, go to 3. Pass the turn. Opponent could at this point just wait and not do anything. But they cast a Thassa's Oracle. Okay, trigger on the stack. They could spoils. They could try and go for the combo if they wanted. Um, but like I said, generally whoever combos first loses. We are ahead on the clock though, which means we are going to actually have to try and find a way to win. Or, yeah, because we we're two minutes down on them. Play a Thassa's Oracle. Put Grave Titan on top. Play a gemstone mine, pass the turn. So we're going to really have to try and resolve this Grave Titan to win. If it actually hits the board, um, we're probably okay. But if it doesn't, we are almost certainly screwed. Okay, so opponent discards Spoils of the Vault. Lotus Bloom's coming off Suspend. So cast Lotus Bloom. Cast Lotus Bloom. Draw Grave Titan. So we have two Pact of Negation back up. We could Spoils for Thoughtseize, and we know that that's not in the bottom six cards of our deck. Um, so we could Spoil for Thoughtseize, get a good look at what's going on, and then decide like what the best way to resolve Grave Titan is. But if we Spoils for Pact, there, there's literally twice as many Pacts left in our deck as there are Thoughtseize. We can also do this at instant speed. Um, but our opponent has had a very long time to sculpt their hand. I'm going to Spoils for Thoughtseize. Okay, six cards left in our deck. It was literally the bottom card other than the cards we put on the bottom. <laughs> so let's go ahead and Thoughtseize our opponent, see what's going on there. Opponent is going to Echoing Truth, Phyrexian on life, so we Angel's Grace. That has to resolve. They bounce on life. So opponent is not playing the exact same list that we are because they have Echoing Truth and we do not. I think their list is an older list. Okay. What do you find us, Thoughtseize? They're going to Pact Thoughtseize. Okay. Um, we could Pact Pact. That would make them do something else and that would make them do it now. I think I'm going to do that. A second Pact. Alright, well we don't have a choice on that one. Unlife has to resolve or we lose. Okay, it resolves. Play Grave Titan. Hey, Grave Titan resolved. Sweet. Pass the turn. Okay, opponent untaps. Packed trigger. They have to pay for it. They could Angel's Grace, but I think that would be a waste of an Angel's Grace from this position. Oh, fun fact. When they Echoing Truth Phyrexian Unlife, they had to bounce their own Phyrexian Unlife. <laughs> <laughs> so opponent might have to spend their turn recasting it, which is kind of funny. All right, they play a land. We are no longer at positive life totals, though, which is a big deal. For reasons I stated earlier. All right, we got to pay five. We should avoid using um, City of Brass as much as possible. Okay, we draw spoils, which we're not casting. We need to block pretty much everything they have every turn, because Angel's Grace can't save us from uh, taking damage due to Infect and such. It doesn't make the tokens attacking, right? It just creates them. Okay. All right. Make tokens. We do have another Pact of Negation, I think, in the deck, because we have two in our Grave and one in our Exile Zone, so if we had to, we could Spoils for a Pact of Negation. Opponent chumps enough to only take six. Okay, they go to five. Pass. I don't know if Pact is on the bottom of our deck, though, so I want to avoid spoilsing for it if I absolutely can. Unlife at this point just gives them X more turns where X is the number of Angel's Graces they're willing to cast. We don't have an answer, um, which is a problem. 
So if they have more than seven turns left, uh, we're going to lose. Simply because we can only Angel's Grace to prevent ourselves from dying to our own draws a couple of times. Lightning Storm actually matters, potentially, um, because it is extra damage we can do. So attack like this. Make more zombies. Okay, opponent Angel's Grace. They're going to stay at a positive one life total, which means they are at minimum two swings from dead. Pass the turn. We do actually have to be careful with Lightning Storm because they can redirect it with any lands they're holding, which, if they were smart, unlike me, they should have at least one or two in hand for that eventuality because they know that they haven't seen it in our deck or exile zone. We only have like four cards left. So we can try to Lightning Storm them to take them below one and then attack. But without a land to guarantee that the Lightning Storm is going to hit them, or without enough land to do that anyway, I, uh, I think that's a little dangerous. I think it's safest to just keep attacking. Absolutely no reason not to block here. Okay, we untap. We draw Pact. Okay. So it comes down to whatever their last protection spells are. Swinging for a million here doesn't matter for reasons I explained earlier. Um, because our opponent is at a positive life total. They're going to Angel's Grace because they have a bunch of them still. Uh, I only have three minutes left on the clock, so if uh, if this does end up going to game three... I might be in trouble. I might not be able to win in the time allotted. So I have to evaluate what my opponent's doing very quickly and try and win as best I can. Okay, opponent plays a Pentad Prism, that's fine. I think my opponent might be trying to run out my clock. Ooh, we get a Thassa's Oracle. Okay. Um... Yeah, go to combat. Okay. Third Angel's Grace. They only have, at most, one more. Thassa's Oracle can technically win us the game because we do have enough blue devotion. If my opponent casts an Ad Nauseum here, I have to pack the negation. Um, I can't afford them to refill their hand or potentially dig for the final grace without using a spoils. So, packed. Okay, opponent untaps. They play a land. They only have two cards left. Okay, we gotta pay for Pact. We draw Sea Chrome Coast. All right, we are going to try to Lightning Storm them. Okay, opponent has their final Angel's Grace. Sure. So next turn, we can Thassa's Oracle extremely safely. We do have a card left in our deck. There's no reason to play out anything else or attack. We're just wasting time at this point. We're gonna pass. If their last card's Ad Nauseam, that's a pain. It has every right to be, considering the, how the rest of this game is gone. Um, but that will eat a ton of my opponent's clock if it is. Okay, opponent draws a card. Okay, they're going to Spoils. There's nothing we can do about that. This will take them to less than one life, which means Angel's Grace will no longer save them. They're going to hit Ad Nauseam. That's what they named. Okay. Well, we have Angel's Grace, <sighs> so we should be able to survive any way that they go in, that they try and win here, at least. And they are going to even up the clock with this maneuver, so we are in a lot safer position as far as Moto is concerned. All right, ad nauseum, you got it. I'm watching the um, area over on the right to see what they're trying to pick up, or if they're just going to try and go for the combo kill. Oh, are they? If they try and lightning storm me, I'm actually dead, because we don't have a last pact of negation, and Angel's Grace won't save us. Um, if we take ten damage or more, uh, we 
yeah, they picked up Lightning Storm. So we'll actually lose if we take 10 damage or more. Because while we can Angel's Grace to survive, we untap and the instant state-based actions are checked on our next turn. It will see that we have uh, enough infect counters to lose. And there will be no Angel's Grace. You can't cast Angel's Grace in response. You just lose. All right, so opponent is going to Thought Seize. Um, let's see if we can fake them out. So we'll Angel's Grace. They take an infect. They do get to Thought Seize. If we go to game three, though, now our opponent only has a minute on the clock, and we can probably beat an opponent that has a minute on the clock. They took Thassa's Oracle, so we can't just win with that. They n they're not going for the Lightning Storm. The Lightning Storm is how... <laughs> That's how they win. Opponent has to discard due to hand size. If my opponent Lightning Stormed me there and uh, had one more land than they needed to kill me, they win. So opponent did not technically play to their last out, um, but I don't think they could have won game three with a minute on the clock. Um, holy crap, I think that's the first Ad Nauseam versus Ad Nauseam matchup I've ever won in my life, despite the number of Ad Nauseam games. And we kept it, like, it's, it's on video. So, <laughs> see you guys in round two. What are the odds? I mean, it's something like 2% of the metagame, right? According to MTG Goldfish, so who knows how popular it actually is. But I'm very happy that we managed to beat them. Because that's something I don't think I've ever done before, in, in seriousness. Alright. Round two. Whew. Um, we have fast mana, we have unlife. Uh, we're going to keep this. We are on the uh, draw, so it does suck a little bit. Put a mulligan to four. Hopefully we can beat Tron that only has four like, four cards in hand. Unless it's natural Tron um, Karn shenanigans. Uh, and in which case, there's still a possibility we could win in that scenario. Mm. Okay. We get Angel's Grace. Play Pentad Prism. They play Chromatic Star. Okay, so this is not turn three Tron on four, four cards in hand. Ancient Stirrings. Let's see what they get. Forest. I mean, that's a decent hit for them. So they probably play a Forest this turn. Oh, they play another Tower. All right. They're going to go maximum high roll if they uh, hit that last Tron land. We untap Lotus Bloom ticking down. Hit the Mana Monkey. Play Gemstone Mine. I think because of how close we are to comboing, I'm going to play a Thassa's Oracle here to see if we can't hit a, a combo piece. Um, put Serum Visions on top. Pass the turn. If we hit Spoils, if we hit Ad Nauseum, um, we win. Either one of those would do it. Okay. We draw... Serum Visions. Serum Visions. Lotus Bloom to the bottom, Ad Nauseum to the top. Play Dark Slick. White, white, white. Play Phyrexian on life. Pass the turn, just for some redundancy. No attacks, it's not necessary here. Okay, opponent plays their Forest. We draw Ad Nauseum. So, triple black. Cast Ad Nauseum. Pick up our whole deck. The clicking of victory, as I call it. Because I'm too lazy to figure out which button is okay for the moto prompt. I think it's like F2 or something like that. Uh, there's actually a little keyboard icon in the bottom right hand where you can see that Phyrexian on life. Um, but I still prefer the clicking of victory. Alright, play this just so we have the redundant ability to play a third uh, Thassa's Oracle if necessary. But that won't be necessary. Cool! So we win game one. Pretty handily. Okay, versus Tron. I guess this is the Ceremonious Rejection matchup. Pact Mitigation probably going to do work here as well. Um, question is, what do I trim for these cards? And is it worth it? We'll cut a couple of Serum Visions. 
and uh, we could cut a Lotus Bloom if we wanted to. I'm going to cut an Unlife, actually. Unlife is not critical to us winning. <sighs> I really like Ad Nauseum, um, mainly because it's extremely easy for me personally to identify what has to happen in order for me to win. Um, like, from basically any position in any board state, I can tell you what has to happen. Uh, you know, what cards I have to draw, what my opponent has to not have, uh, how we're, how we're going to get the mana, um, all of it. I can tell you all of it. And if that doesn't happen and we lose, I don't feel bad. Because it's like, I know exactly what has to happen. So if it doesn't, then it doesn't. Uh, we'll keep this. This is the full combo. I'm going to put back Pact of Negation. We do not have, uh, Angel's Grace, so we can't Pact safely at any point. Our opponent is Mulligan to four again. It's a little braver mulliganing um, than I would be tr uh, playing Tron, but I don't know if it's going to be good enough. We'll see. I think the best thing our opponent could have from their position currently is a Nature's Claim, and that just slows us down. That doesn't win. All right, second thought is Oracle is good. Play Sea Chrome Coast past the turn. We do need mana. Okay, opponent cracks Chromatic Star for green. Looks like they have an Ancient Stirrings. They could play land and Sylvan Scrying, but uh, given how low their hand they, they mulligan to, I, I really doubt that they have it in their hand. Opponent did do this properly, though, where uh, cracking the star without doing it while paying the mana cost to draw an additional card and have that information prior to casting a spell uh, is generally correct to do that in Tron. There's a lot of weird rules around mana abilities that uh, draw cards and, and doing them during mana costs and such. Uh, the biggest one that I know of, besides Chromatic uh, Sphere, I, that's the reason I think they printed Chromatic Star and not Chromatic Sphere again, um, besides this effect looking innocuous on a cheap artifact, when it's not. Uh, the other one is Selvala, the Celesnia colored one. The Celesnia colored Selvala has a lot of problems if you illegally pay mana costs and stuff like that during a tournament, because it requires you to reveal hidden information to generate mana. But it's a mana ability, so it can be activated without being able to be responded to. And the whole big nest, nasty nest of stuff involved in that. Okay, so I doubt my opponent is in the tank because I've been rambling for about a minute about irrelevant things. Okay, cool. So they do have two Tron lands. So our, my opponent was in the tank. I was actually thinking that maybe they rage quit. Um, wow, all right. Opponent is going to have Tron this game, which is a problem. So, play Pentad Prism. We are very close to comboing. Okay, opponent goes and gets Tower. And then they have something to play off of Tower, Chromatic Star. Okay, so this is probably Sylvan Scrying getting a redundant Tower. If my opponent has Ulamog, I don't think I can win. Um, okay. If my opponent has Karn, it's possible to win. It's not super likely, but it is possible. Okay, Pact of Negation is pretty good. So, Pact of Negation makes me feel a lot safer. What I'm going to do here is cast on life. And if my opponent plays something really disagreeable, I'm going to Pact. I'll probably have to have full price Pact, which will suck. But, okay, my opponent has 9 mana. So it's not a Ulamog. They can destroy our unlife. Yeah, we have to let them. If they uptick, they lose. Plain and simple. Um, so, if we pacted that, we had to pay all of our mana, and we would be out of mana and unable to ad nauseum. We can ad nauseum pretty safely, because it's not like they do a lot of direct damage or anything. Um, and in fact, I'm probably just going to uh, do what we call in the business a value ad nauseum here. You just have to be careful to, if you are at 5 life, stop. Okay, Angel's Grace is good. We're looking for a spoils, really. Okay, there it is. I do not wish to repeat this. Suspend Lotus Bloom, play Dark Slick Shores, and we'll pass. Discard Land, Ad Nauseum. So now, if they play something really scary, we can pack it and we're just fine. Okay, opponent upticks Ugin. It's a bear. Nine mana. Could be big Ugin. Oh. Okay. Kind of sad I discarded that land. 
That was a mistake. Let me think. They're taking out our white mana, so we can no longer Angel's Grace. We can survive a hit from Ulamog. We need to top deck a land, though. We have sleight of hand in order to get there. Okay, regardless, we can't Pactum Negation this, so we have to let that resolve. Yeah, if I had thought about that, I um, I would have kept the Dark Slick Shores. Oh, we have two turns on that? Okay. We draw an on life, so let's go ahead and Sleight of Hand. Pactum Negation, City of Brass. Okay, so take City of Brass. Play City of Brass. Um, We can now Pact again safely. And we're not going to die due to damage, so go ahead and pass. The only way this is bad is if my opponent has another Ulamog. And even then, it's only sort of bad. I forgot that this had cost reduction stapled onto it. So, okay, opponent gets a Spirit. Sylvan Scrying. They probably get a Sanctum of Ugin here, unless they really need more mana. At which point they'll get a Tower. Blast Zone. Really? Blast Zone doesn't save you from anything as far as I know because we don't play any one mana lands or anything like that or one mana uh, lands, one, lands, one mana effects okay so we are going to take 12 damage go to two opponent exiles a good portion of our library which is fine we have everything we need to win we go to two okay untap lotus bloom ticking down so if we top deck a blue or a white source, we win on the spot. Yeah, I should have kept that land other than the Simeon Spirit Guide. That was a massive punt. Because I still technically can't win this turn. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter what's left in our deck. So we have to Angel's Grace on their turn, which means we can't Pact safely. Yeah, I've navigated myself into a poor position. We can still win. It's just not going to be a fantastic win, that's all. Okay, they're putting Blast Zone on three. I, don't, I think that's just because they don't have anything else to do. Okay, so they play Karn. This is a problem. <laughs> yeah, I think I finally navigated into a position I lose. So, if we pacted that, we would have had an Angel's Grace. We would not have a library left. We could spoils now for an Angel's Grace, and I guess technically if it's the top card, we're fine. So hold priority, add white, Angel's Grace. Okay. We can win, but only if the top card of our deck is Angel's Grace. So spoils? It was not. Okay. Yep, that was my bad. I threw that game away. The good news is Tron is supposed to be an easy matchup. So I think in the average scenario, we should beat them. All right, I'd love to play first. Um, this hand's okay, but I'm not thrilled about it. I'm gonna mulligan. I think we have better sixes, except this one. Can I win off of just a Lotus Bloom? There are not many hands of four that'll beat a Tron hand of seven. I'm going to four. Okay, we'll keep this. We're gonna put back Pact, Pact, Dark Slick. And start Temple. Spirit Guide to the bottom. That is not a card we want to draw. Oh, I'm going to be so upset if we lose this match. I might have to take a break and come back for the rest of the league if that happens. Okay, Dark Slick Shores. Play Temple. Sea Crumb to the bottom. We just need to draw Angel's Grace Spoils. That's all. Okay, opponent will have turn 3 Tron. Another Simeon Spirit Guide. We could play City of Brass, but I want to hide our white mana. So we're going to play Dark Slick Shores and pass. Opponent gets Blast Zone? Really? Are they already holding the Tron pieces? They are. Game over. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's going to be game. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm so angry right now. Like, legit mad. Trinosphere, yep. It's a good card. Versus us, anyway. Okay, play Temple of Deceit. Go Scrying. Thassa's Oracle to the bottom. Pass the turn. Because we can't use any of our artifact mana, and the minimum amount of mana we need to win with a Trinisphere on board is 9. 
I mean, technically we could technically we could draw Frexian on life, draw land, or yeah, draw land, draw Frexian on life, and then um, a spoils, I guess. But considering my opponent is going to be removing all of our mana very quickly now, there's no way we can win. So we should have absolutely won this match. I uh, I was just really dumb and was like, oh, some spirit guide is more important than a land because it's fast mana. No, colors are important. <laughs> oh. Hmm. I don't think that changes anything, but we're going to try. We're going to try. Okay, opponent plays a tower. Because, like, if they have Ulamog, they just, like, Ulamog, down tick. Okay. Let them take Oracle. Are they going to restart the game? I was going to say, why would they? They have such an extreme advantage. We might be able to do it if we can get to Thassa's Oracle. I'm going to repeat this, but if we flip Abnasium, we lose. All right, I can't go lower than that. Untap, we draw. First things first, get all these out of our hand, because we're not playing them. Costs three mana to do anything. They can't deal direct damage to us. Planes to the bottom, Thassa's Oracle to the top. Suspend. Play land. Alright, pass the turn. I don't think our opponent's ever going to let us have six mana, though, is the problem. They cycle Wilt. Artifact mana does nothing for us here. Neither really does tap lands. Ad nauseum we won't be casting at any point. City of Brass will kill us. Sleight of Hand, not relevant. Probably only need one spoils. I'm still going to try hard to win, because I really want to win. And it's possible if my opponent screws up or does the wrong thing, we could still win. Probably should have discarded Pact, because I can't even cast it. Opponent, if they're doing the right thing, should just blow up two lands. Like, hands down. Yep. Simeon Spirit Guide is the only fast mana we could get, and I guess technically it would help. Yep. Okay, opponent's figured it out. They know what they gotta do. We could crack those lotus blooms. We could stall long enough, but that's not happening. I'm so mad. I should have won. Um, I should have won. We got severely unlucky. Game three, just like terrible mulliganing, but that's what happens when you don't take the guaranteed win in game two like you should, because I wasn't paying attention. Uh, all right, round three. Here we go. We'll play first. I mean, it's the bare minimum for a keep, so we're going to keep. Like, unlife ad nauseum mana. Gemstone Caverns is never a good thing to see when your opponent starts in game, or opponent's on the draw in game one. Exiling Chandra Torch of Defiance. So it looks like my opponent is playing the, uh, like, free win red deck, if I had to guess. Uh, Simeon Spirit Guide to the top. I want to get this unlife down ASAP. So as long as my opponent doesn't turn one Blood Moon, we're fine. We should have enough land, uh, mana, or enough turns to draw to what we need. But if my opponent goes Land Ritual Blood Moon, it's like, well, they play Bloodstained Mire. Really? All right, what did I say? <laughs> opponent, what did I say? I said, as long as you don't Land Ritual Blood Moon, we're fine. And you had to do it. Okay, well, we need to draw Lotus Blooms quickly, or Penthead Prism, or our basic, or Penthead Prism plus our basics. Um, the only reason I'm playing this deck is because I didn't take the guaranteed win versus Tron. Alright, opponent's got nothing. We draw a Serum Visions we can't cast, so we play a land that doesn't tap for a color of mana we can use and pass. Opponent does nothing. We draw Pact of Negation. Pass. Opponent does nothing. We draw Pact of Negation. Pass. Opponent just has to draw lands. We have to draw specific lands or artifact mana. We will almost certainly not be winning with Lightning Storm, so there's no reason to be holding on to these lands. Especially when our colored mana is going to be at a premium. Oh, we could have cast Simeon Spirit Guide. I'm dumb. <laughs> Here I was thinking I'd need it for mana. Um, 
That's bad. I missed four damage on my opponent. Okay, Pentad Prism is good. Pentad Prism will let us play Unlife or Serum Visions. And at this point, honestly, I think Serum Visions is more important. Despite the fact that the other is a combo piece, we need to hit. Yeah, there we go. Basic Planes is really good. Spirit Guide, Angel's Grace to the bottom. Cast Spirit Guide. This should prevent them from attacking with Rabble Master unless they have removal, which they almost certainly do. Three mana. Rabble Master, two. Oh my god, damage Boogaloo. Alright, well we're blocking Rabble. Um, we need a Pented Prism off the top. In order to win. Um, we're going to play on life this turn. Our opponent should not be able to answer blood, uh, answer on life with just red mana. Um, we're at too high of a life total for them to reduce us to below one. And then if we top deck Pentad Prism, we have the win. Okay. So basic island or Pentad Prism. Anything else will be too slow. That's a problem. Pentad Prism is no longer a win. I actually am not sure we can win now. Because everyone and their mother is running this card. Liquid Metal Coating, okay? But it makes a Goblin, it's in for a lot. We go down to six. Yeah, all right, concede. Ugh, I am so salty right now. I can't even begin to tell you. Okay, so versus the Blood Moon deck, I want Thoughtseize, um, I want Ceremonious Rejection for Karn. We're gonna go down. Um, Two Serum Visions, and probably an Oracle. It's too mana intensive, really. Run it back. Our only basics are two planes in this version. I don't know about that. I think one of those needs to be an island. For the record, the thing that killed us was not Blood Moon. It was Karn. Because, <laughs> like, we use so much artifact mana. Karn being a Null Rod is just too good. Four mana Null Rod, plus Blood Moon. One or the other, we can win. Both, we cannot. This version of the deck also does not have any proactive enchantment removal. I just picked the most recent list and decided I don't know what the metagame is, so I better play it and find out before I actually try this deck. Alright, we'll play first. No. This is a lot more reasonable. I'm going to keep this one. Once again, um, like Blood Moon is terrible, and we don't have a pact or anything we could protect ourselves turn one from it. So, we're going to start Sea Chrome Coast Serum Visions. Okay, double Pentad Prism is actually quite nice. I'm going to put them both back. If we can land even one of them before our opponent lands a Blood Moon, we're in a so much better place. But our opponent's deck is built to turn one Blood Moon. Alright, they're not turn one Blood Moon. That is a big deal. Okay, play Gemstone Mine. White, red, Pentad Prism. We now have access to Ceremonious Rejection for Karn. Blood Moon, while a problem, would not be the end of the world. Okay, I'm going to play a Swamp. A Braid. Well, we know we have a Pentad Prism on top. I don't want to use up Spoils, though. Okay. We can play Unlife or we can play Pentad Prism. I think we play Pented Prism. This time, if my opponent abrades it, I will spoils for something. <sighs> okay. Marsh Flats for our opponent. Blood Crypt. Desperate Ritual to four. If this is Karn, we can counter. If it's Chandra, we can't. Problem is now we only have one counter on Gemstone Mine. That was a problem. I actually wasn't paying attention. I should have used City of Brass first, and then only taken a counter off this if I needed to. Same, it works out the same um, considering the cards that we have, but suspend Lotus Bloom. We're gonna go white, black, white. Play on life. I don't want to spoils this turn unless I have to. But if my opponent plays another Karn, I will take the last counter off Pented Prism. If my opponent plays a Blood Moon, I will take the last counter off Gemstone Mine. 
Okay, Castle Lockthwain for our opponent. Liliana of the Veil. Okay, Lily is really hard for this deck to beat. So we have to let our opponent make us discard spoils. We basically have the top deck land and um, ad nauseum to win. It's good because we already have Phyrexian on life down. But it's bad because if we draw ad nauseum, we can't do anything. If this Lotus Bloom comes down before Karn, and we draw a Ad Nauseum after that, we can win pretty easily. Now it's a Karn or a Chandra. Karn would be a problem, Chandra would not. Chandra, okay. Okay, they're not taking up for mana. Oh no, oh no. Uh, we have to bring in Veil of Summer because we cannot, absolutely cannot beat a Slaughter Games. Well, actually no, we can. We can't beat two Slaughter games. Okay, Lotus Bloom ticking down. We draw Angel's Grace. Um, My opponent did not tick up Chandra, or not Chandra, Liliana. They're holding something they want to cast. Okay, they make us discard. We're going to discard Pact. Opponent discards Ensnaring... You don't have a better card to put in your deck than Ensnaring Bridge? Versus the deck that runs no creatures. <sighs> Alright. It's a Karn. That's a problem. It's a big problem. Uh, Alright. I'm sorry, because this is not riveting gameplay. Okay, we untap. Lotus Bloom coming off suspend a turn too late. We get Mana Monkey. We could play Mana Monkey, but we would lose one of our lands to do it, and I think we need the extra mana in our hand. Our opponent is going to ult Lily, though, and we have no chances for a redraw. I think we actually can't win from this position. Um, they uptick Lily, we discard Angel's Grace, that's what's going to happen. Um, but even if we draw Ad Nauseum, we can't cast it, simply because we just don't have enough mana. Um, and we won't have the uh, ability to draw enough cards to cast it. Um, and then our opponent's going to alt Liliana and take us off of our dream of winning at any point. And I think my opponent got Liquid Metal Coating anyway. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and scoop this one up. This league is going to be long enough as it is, and I might have to shorten it. Which is... <sighs> it's all because we didn't take the win versus Tron, because... Kano's like, I'm dumb. I don't know what colored mana is. <laughs> it's red mana more important when nothing I cast is red ever. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, round four. We're in the loser's bracket, so we can play, you know, anti-ad nauseum decks like that. All right, I cannot keep this, even in the best of times. I think it's too dangerous. This, on the other hand, is quite good. I'm going to keep this, and I'm going to put back City of Brass. And as long as we're not playing the turn one Blood Moon deck, I think we'll be fine. <laughs> Alright, opponent keeps seven. We're going to keep six. Put back City of Brass. Star Dark Slick Shores, suspend Lotus Bloom. If we draw Thassa's Oracle, we win. If we draw Ad Nauseum, we win. No! No, not again! <laughs> no! I don't want to play this matchup again. It will it will take hours. Oh my god. I might rage quit this league because I already have like two hours of gameplay footage. And I don't want to go through this again. I already proved I could do it. Is this the same guy? It is not the same guy. Okay, we draw Unlife. So that's really good. We should play Unlife. Okay, pass the turn. Opponent's not going to have enough mana to win, but if they play a white source this turn, we can no longer guarantee that we can win. Okay, they Serum Visions. They play a City of Brass. So they have white mana. We can't just combo now. I mean, unless, of course, they tap out. In which case, we can. I'd like to draw a Pact for protection, but... 
All right, spoils. Name ad nauseum. Okay. And black mana. We're gonna use Simeon Spirit Guide. All right, opponent has packed. Unlife to the bottom, pass the turn. Opponent does have a Lotus Bloom coming off suspend this turn they can use to pay. I literally do not think I can get this video processed and released in time if I play this matchup. I can't believe that not only one mistake not only cost us a match, as is normal, I truly and genuinely believe one mistake cost us this whole league. That one mistake versus Tron, I think, cost us this entire league. Which makes this really super mega extra frustrating. At this point, I can pretty much only hope that my opponent just combos and we Angel's Grace and win that way. They leave it on top, whatever it is. Okay, we draw ad nauseum, which is good. But we are past the point of potentially winning the game, and now in the awkward stall phase of this matchup. I do not know what my opponent is doing right now. Unless it's play Lab Man, in which case, that would suck. Laboratory Maniac is definitely better in the ad nauseum versus ad nauseum matchup than Thassa's Oracle is. Okay, so I mean Spirit Guide. Okay, we untap. We draw Pentad Prism, so play Pentad Prism. When it attacks for two. Okay, opponent plays their own Pentad Prism. We untap. We draw Thassa's Oracle. I'm gonna do it. Ad nauseum. We're not gonna combo here, we just wanna draw enough cards to uh like play a land and whatnot. This this seriously might be the first league I rage quit due to time because I need to have a video out by noon. And it's already nine. It takes like two hours to process a video. So Okay, opponent's going to spoils in response. See what they name. I could die to a spoils without an angel's grace. <laughs> okay, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> Opponent exiled 32 cards. Um, so Grave Titan in, Pact of Negation in, Thoughtseize in, Cantrip, Cantrip, Cantrip out. Run it back. This might, I'm, if I could beat Ad Nauseum twice in the same league with Ad Nauseum, <laughs> I'll be pretty thrilled about that. Um... I mean, we technically have the combo, right? I'm going to mulligan. I want Angel's Grace or some kind of protection if possible. All right, I didn't get it. I'm going to put back Thassa's Oracle. Okay, opponent starts Sea Chrome Coast. We get a Spirit Guide. So Temple of Enlightenment tapped. Angel's Grace to the top. Pass the turn. Okay, so we get our Angel's Grace. Play a Plains. Play Pentad Prism. Careful to tap for two colors of mana there. Pass the turn. All right, opponent plays Temple of Enlightenment. Thought sees. Yeah, sure. Take whatever you like. Probably Angel's Grace, if I'm being honest. Or Ad Nauseum. Ad Nauseum is fair. Yep, they take Angel's Grace. We untap. We draw a second on life, so go ahead and play on life. F6, because we're not playing anything this turn. Okay. We draw our own Thought Seize. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on in our opponent's hand. Spoils, Grace, Grace, Adnaz. And a Spirit Guide. Um, I'm going to take Ad Nauseam, I think. Then we'll pass. Okay, pump top deck to Cantrip. 
So we know they don't have a counter spell. They just have Angel's Graces. They could Spoils for a counter spell, and they could Angel's Grace Spoils for a counter spell. But if they go negative doing that, they uh, they will lose. All right. Um, ad nauseum. Okay, opponent's going to Spoils. So they're Spoilsing for Pact of Negation. Okay, they go down to 10. This means they are going to... Um, and we put they put two cards on top, so we exiled the two cards they wanted to keep. And they have to use an Angel's Grace or their Simeon Spirit Guide to pay for what's on t or to pay for the trigger, basically. Sorry. I'm kind of getting lost here because I stopped paying attention for a second. They didn't really lose any win conditions, but they are down a Simeon Spirit Guide. So they Angel's Grace to get through the trigger, but we are almost out of mana entirely, and they leave a card on top. That's never a good sign. Okay, play Penthead Prism. Pass the turn. So they probably picked up another Angel's Grace or um, Pact of Negation. So we Temple of Deceit. Go Scrying. Penthead Prism to the bottom. Pass the turn. And we're just F6ing at this point because we don't really have any interaction. And I am so bored of playing this matchup that I really don't care. <laughs> Alright, they get a Lotus Bloom. They suspend a new one. So their hand is Angel's Grace, Simeon Spirit Guide, one unknown. Temple of Deceit, on life to the bottom. Um, you know what? I am going to play Thassa's Oracle. I'm going to see if we can hit an Ad Nauseum off of it. Okay, we don't want either of those cards. Pass the turn. Hit them for one. Pass the turn. I don't know if my opponent's seen this Phyrexian on life or not. I don't think so. So that's kind of why I'm holding on to it at the moment. Um... They play their own on life, okay? We draw City of Brass. So play City, cast Simeon Spirit Guide. We're going to attack for one, take them to eight. We are many turns away from killing them, and they probably can just combo and win. Because um, the odds of us having a Pact of Negation or an Angel's Grace, I guess, are kind of medium. We only have one card in hand. Okay, Pono plays their own Simeon Spirit Guide out of hand. They don't intend to try and combo. Play Temple. Dark Slick to the bottom. Go to combat. Attack with both. Opponent trades, takes one. They play City of Brass. And pass. We untap. Lotus Bloom coming off suspend. We draw another on life. Attack for one. F6. Alright, go to combat. Attack for one. Opponent goes to 5. Cast Simeon Spirit Guide. F6. I mean, I guess it's theoretically possible we win by beating down. But my opponent has to draw something at this point. They have 6 cards in hand. Alright, Pact of Negation is actually super good. That does give us some kind of interaction, so I'm not going to F6 anymore. Take our opponent to 2, pass the turn. Sleight of hand. Thoughtseize. Hmm. Okay. This is going to take them below one. If they just have the combo, that's fine. Okay, the Angel's Grace, which is kind of a waste. They have not played a land, so they can play an untapped land and play um, uh, Thassa's Oracle, if they've got it. Which they should. I mean, like, they've drawn a lot of cards. Gemstone Mine. Yep. Okay. That's fine. Opponent probably had the capability to do that a lot sooner. I could have packed it and maybe bought more time, but... I don't know that I want to bring in Veil of Summer. I'm just going to run this back. Alright, we'll play first. Not a ban hand. We'll keep. Start Temple of Deceit. Temple of Enlightenment to the top. Pass the turn. 
We have the combo with Pact back up, so if my opponent is out of white mana at the time, I'm going to go for it when we hit four. Because um, we can handle one Pact of Negation, but we can't handle two Pacts or more. Two Pacts, more, or an Angel's Grace, basically. So, play Temple of Enlightenment, Scry, Ad Nauseam to the bottom, not really what we're looking for right now. Sleight of Hand, we'll take a Pentad Prism. Phyrexian on life would be good, but I don't really need it. Okay, they play City of Brass. White mana, black mana. So this is probably a Pentad Prism. If I knew I was top decking a Simeon Spirit Guide, I'd just go for it here. Pack this, Grace, and then go, but cannot guarantee that that's what's happening here. We draw Ad Nauseam anyway. Okay, white, black, play Pentad Prism. If my opponent were to go shields down this turn for some reason, we could combo. They just, I don't think they will. There's no reason for them to use their Pentad Prism mana unless they're desperate to get down something like uh, Phyrexian on life. Okay, they are casting cantrips. They play a tap land. So we have five mana on our next turn. Temple of Deceit, okay, scry. Lotus Bloom to the bottom. Pass the turn. Lotus Bloom coming off suspend for our opponent. And they cast a Serum Visions. One card on the bottom, one card on the top. Okay, well we're going to do kind of what our opponent did and spoils for Thoughtseize. Um, about a 50% chance we die here. Okay. We did not die. We also did not lose anything too important. Fire off Thoughtseize. They packed. Packed their packed. They may have to Desperation Grace here. They have another packed. Okay. Well, that's two Pact of Negations down. And they do have to pay for it next turn, which means they might attempt, like, a Value Ad Nauseam or Combo. Okay. Oh, they're going to pay for it. Not what I expected, but a welcome sight to be sure. Grace, we will not be paying the mana. Draw City of Brass, which is good. Take the damage, cast Ad Nauseam. I think I am just going to go for the combo here. They're going to Ad Nauseam in response. So they're going to try and get to Pact of Negation. Well, they already got to Pact of Negation. What are you going to, opponent? Oh, second Ad Nauseam? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, in that case, we're going to lose. Because our opponent can now Pact our Ad Nauseam. And if they have an Angel's Grace, they can just Grace... Uh, we'll be out of, basically out of steam. We have no protection. They can thought see see that that's the case, and then if they get to enough mana, they can they can win. Okay, now what are you doing, opponent? I have great questions for your current line of thinking. At first, I was like, oh, they'll just ad nauseum till they get to their next ad nauseum. They have enough life. Um, we cannot win with lightning storm. They just killed themselves. I, you were fine, opponent. I don't know what you were. I guess if that resolved, we could win off of Thassa's Oracle, and they had no protection, so... I went from never beating the Ad Nausea Mirror Match to now beating it twice in a row. Cool. Um, yeah, we gotta play the last le the last match quick. Because I have to get this video started processing immediately. In fact, I might have to uh, upload this video late, which I hate doing. And the pitch control video went up late because I was an idiot and scheduled it for the wrong day. And by the time I noticed, it was like an hour later. And I was like, huh, nobody commented yet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, that's kind of funny. All right, last match. Win fast or lose fast. Let's go. Um, Combo Serum Visions Hand. I'm going to keep this. If we get a Lotus Bloom, it's fantastic. If we get another land, we're okay. If 
opponent is playing Obosh, the Prey Piercer Burn deck. Sea Chrome Coast Serum Visions. Let's see what we draw. Temple of Deceit, pretty fantastic. I'm going to leave a Gemstone Mine on top, pass the turn. Um, we should be able to beat a burn deck, basically. Okay, opponent starts Mountain. Swift Spear, not Goblin Guide, but we don't really need the extra draw at the moment. Take one, draw Gemstone Mine, play Temple of Deceit, Scry. Penthead Prism to the top, pass the turn. Um, we can play Penthead Prism if we want to try and charge up mana and have the turn four win. Um, or we could play Phyrexian Unlife, which is like gaining 10 life or more, um, depending on whether or not your opponent knows to play around it. Okay, second Swift Spear, Firebolt. Okay. I'm kind of in the we should play Phyrexian Unlife camp at the moment. Although I guess we would technically have um, Adna or Angel's Grace if we were to look like we're going to lose immediately, so I guess this is safer. If we top deck an untapped mana of any kind or a simian spirit guide, we win. Okay, put it bolts. That takes us to 10. The damage from the creatures currently takes us to 6. They do have two cards left in hand. So they go to combat. Attack, attack. Okay, we're currently at 6. They bolt, they take us down to 1. <sighs> they stomp. So that's 8 damage. We go to 2. Damage can't be prevented. Okay, well, two is not dead. We untap. Untapped mana, please. Got it. Okay, Angel's Grace. Ad nauseum. And the clicking of victory commences. Man, I I enjoy doing it this way. And I'm very glad that we got a hand that was fast enough on the play to beat Burn. It's usually a stressful matchup. Um, and a little bit luck-based. Like, more so than usual. Okay. So, play Gemstone Mine. Play Spirit Guide. Float Green Mana. Pentad Prism. Blue, blue, Thassa's Oracle. Sweet. Okay. Um, for burn. We want Leyline of Sanctity in. We cut. We probably don't need redundant oracles, so I'm gonna cut oracles, cut a serum visions, and I think we can cut a pact pretty safely. No reason to bring in Veil or Ceremonious Rejection. Bantu's Last Reckoning probably deserves some consideration, but that's not a card I actually prefer in the sideboard. I'm glad I got up early today to do this league, because man, it took a long time. Um, this hand is a little slow. We do have most of the combo, though. I'm going to keep, because we start with a Serum Visions. The opponent did keep 7, so this is kind of risky. Um, there are hands that Burn has that is fast enough to beat this, especially without a Leyline. I'm going to start Sunbaked Canyon, Blister Coil, weird. Okay. So, play Sea Chrome Coast. Serum Visions. Always cast your cantrip first before you cast before you suspend Lotus Bloom. You don't want your opponent to know it was in your opener. This leaves it open that maybe I drew it, you know. Another Simeon Spirit Guide. Phyrexian Unlife wouldn't be bad, but we're basically just looking for mana at this point. Okay. Suspend Lotus Bloom, pass the turn. Opponent kept the one land burn hand. That may not be fast enough to beat us. We just take one. Light up the stage. Okay. Mountain Pyromancer. So they play a land, and another Blister Coil weird. Okay. Suspend ticking down there. We draw Dark Slick Shores. Play Dark Slick Shores. Black, white, Penthead Prism. Pass the turn. Um, next turn, if we draw an untapped land, we should actually be able to, like, Spoils Grace... Ad nauseum, I think. Though that may not be necessary. Okay, they're going to hit us for 6. We're going to go 11. Still at a relatively high life total. I know if Lotus Bloom comes off suspend, we can win 100%. So, Okay, let me think about this. 
We can play City of Brass. That gives us five mana on board, two mana in hand. If we spoils for um, Ad Nauseum and we don't exile any Simeon Spirit Guides or Thassa's Oracle, we can win. Because <sighs> we've got to use one for Angel's Grace, one for Spoils. We can't play any lands. We would only have two mana after that. Actually, we can't win. We have to wait for next turn. So play Pentad Prism. We have to hope our opponent does not have 12 damage. Okay, opponent goes to combat. They attack for three. Stomp. That's eight. We go to three. Any spell is lethal damage that we would have to grace. Okay, we go to three. If they have damage, they need to play it on their turn. And we win. Cast Bloom. I guess it's technically possible if we have to cast spoils that we could spoils for, or we could lose due to not being able to, um, or like due to not having a uh, win condition left in the deck. But the extra spoils lets us spoils for a win condition first. Um, so we can just spoils for Thassa's Oracle, and then spoils to exile our deck and win the game. Oh, it was the second to last card in our deck. That was a lot of scary noises. All right. Black mana. Spoils of the Vault. Name the traditional commence the end game. <laughs> All right. And opponent concedes. That was the hardest fought league I think I have ever played. Um, I definitely want to swap up the sideboard a lot. I do not want Bantu's Last Reckoning in there at all. I think an Echoing Truth, a Patrician Scorn and uh, like another thought seize would be ideal i think dropping a planes for basic island is also a big deal i understand wanting the planes for the blood moon but at the same time i think having an island in there for the cantrip purposes as well as filtering for pentad prism is very important um, as well as giving you access to things like ceremonious rejection while under a blood moon um, other than that i don't really have any adjustments i want to make to this list i think this list is otherwise solid Let's go ahead and open our treasure chest, and then I gotta get out of here because I have to get this video processed, so it goes up today. We get a Drowned Catacomb, a Crater's Claws, a set of five promo planes that I can't tell what they look like, and five play points. Uh, overall, not really worth it to open that chest, but if you enjoyed this content and you want to see more like it, um, please leave a like, drop a comment, anything you can do, let me know. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined, and if you want to catch me streaming decks like this live, I stream Wednesdays at 6 p.m., Mountain Time on Twitch, which is 8 p.m. Eastern. Same username on Twitch as you can find me on here. And I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!